kind of cooler weather today again. This is actually more ideal for a sunny day anyways. Not too hot, not too cold. And what did I read today? Usually during these times, there's a lot of fireworks shows. And nowadays, there's a lot of people who want to fly their drones right through them. But I guess in this case, in Calgary apparently, somebody did just that and he got in trouble. This one says, man fined for flying drone through Calgary Stampede fireworks show. So what happened here? It says a 24 year old man has been fined for flying a drone through Tuesday's Calgary Stampede fireworks show. Calgary police say this caused a disruption to the show and posed a safety risk to the crowd on the Stampede grounds. During the Stampede festivities from July 5th to 15th, all aircrafts, including remote pilot aircraft systems, are not allowed to fly within one nautical mile radius from the center of the Calgary Stampede grounds to a height of 450 feet above ground level, police explain. The Calgary Police Service, RPAS enforcement team, who under the Minister of Transport, investigate and inspect RPAS and related flight documents under Canadian aviation regulations, started investigating after several reported incidents involving unauthorized drones flying in the restricted airspace surrounding and within the Stampede grounds. Jordan Mitchell is now facing a fine for disrupting the fireworks show and causing concerns around crowd safety. So what is his potential punishment? They're not sure yet, but as they say, under Canadian aviation regulations, unauthorized drone use can result in jail time if it's deemed criminal in nature or up to $3,000 fine for putting aircraft and citizens at risk. So I can imagine what potentially happened here for this person, depending on what he was flying, for example, he could have assumed, okay, I'm within the law in terms of what I'm flying and all that, but with that said, you have to actually read any notices when there's actual restrictions in the airspace. Like they mentioned here, they pretty much banned every single aircraft. And because they consider all drones as a quote aircraft here anyways, you technically can't fly in that area. If you guys remember that other story before where they actually had this blanket ban of quote aircraft, which included things like model aircraft, for example, because that's just the way it is here in terms of the classification. But that's an example. You're gonna have to read up on virtually everything you can before you make your actual flight. Even if you're flying, for example, let's just say a quote micro drone and they have this airspace ban, you could just assume, hey, it's like every other day, it's just be safe, correct? But then all of a sudden you didn't pay attention to whether or not there was a blanket ban in the airspace and you get in trouble here. Because currently, it's not that clear and straightforward for a lot of people, unfortunately, with the way the system is. And I guess that news continues in terms of banning drone flights in general in certain areas. How about this one in the US? Like, they warn you here, don't fly drones during Biden visit, FAA warns. Drone owners need to be aware of flight restrictions Monday during President Joe Biden's visit to Austin and that their drones could be seized or destroyed by federal agents. Starting at 11.15 a.m. on Monday, the Federal Aviation Administration will have temporary flight restrictions for VIP movement in place per a notice to air missions issued Friday morning. The area covers a radius of 30 nautical miles centered on a point in East Austin. That area stretches from Georgetown and Liberty Hill in north to San Marcos and Lockhart in the south. The east, it covers TX-95 from Taylor to Bastrop in the west, Dripping Springs, Wimberley, and Bee Cave. Just based on that map too, that's pretty huge in terms of the radius anyways. It says, according to the NOTAM, the following types of flights will not be allowed within the temporary restriction area. Trainings, gliders, parachute jumps, ultralight aircraft, hot air balloons, banner towing, agriculture, animal population control, aerobatic sightseeing, maintenance tests, and surveys. The restrictions also cover unmanned aircraft, commonly known as drones, model aircrafts, and rockets. So it's virtually everything. And that's, again, an example on how they're all kind of classified in the same category per se. So you have to read up on this stuff as well. And this was kind of an interesting story where apparently today, all this report was coming out on how in the US, AT&T was apparently, I guess, hacked in terms of their data and it affected virtually everybody. It says AT&T says hackers stole some data from nearly all wireless customers. AT&T has announced that the company believes a hacker stole records of calls and texts from nearly all of AT&T's wireless customers according to a financial filing from the company. And it says, quote, the data does not contain the content of calls or texts personal information such as social security numbers, 
dates of birth, or other personally identifiable information. AT&T said in their statement released early Friday morning, these records identify the telephone numbers with which an AT&T or MVNO wireless number interacted during these periods, including telephone numbers of AT&T wireline customers and customers of other carriers, counts of those interactions and aggregate calls duration for a day or month. So in some ways, they kind of make it sound like it's not that big of a deal, but that's a pretty big security breach, isn't it? I guess it's just another example too. When you have everything stored, for example, let's just say digitally in certain places, just getting compromised, a big company like that having so much data and information, it's probably gonna be out there as they say here on how they found out, I guess, people trying to sell information and all that. Can you ever truly be secure? All right, see you guys later.